This is right triangle trigonometry, 4.3. We're going to be using these definitions right here. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And you'll notice that this is the reciprocal of that, hypotenuse over opposite. That is called the cosecant. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. You'll notice that this one is the reciprocal of that, hypotenuse over adjacent. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And then finally, tangent and cotangent are reciprocals, opposite over adjacent and adjacent over opposite. Now we can apply these ideas over here to question number one um, because um, we have a right triangle. And all trigonometry works with right triangles. So looking at this triangle, you'll notice that we're missing side B. But Pythagoras can help us find that side. If we, Pythagoras said that if you have a leg squared plus a leg squared, you get the hypotenuse squared. So that would be 1 squared plus b squared equals 5 squared. So that's 1 plus b squared equals 25. b squared equals 24. Now you'll notice that when I take the square root of both sides here, I do not use the plus or minus. Why? Because this is a side length. I know it's going to be positive, so I can skip the minus and just leave it positive. Square root of 24, I'm going to break up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6, which is just 2 root 6. All right, now that I have that, I have all three sides that I need. So now when I'm going to try to find the sine, cosine, tangent, and all those other things, all six of them is what they'd like, um, I know that the sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. Now, opposite of what? Well, here's the angle right here. This is the theta corner. So the opposite side must be side A. The hypotenuse is always your longest side, which is this one here, and then that must be that the adjacent is B. Okay, so opposite over hypotenuse would be one-fifth. Now this is easy once you have the sign to find the cosecant, because it's just the reciprocal of that, which would be five. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that'd be two root six over five. And the secant would be that upside down, so that would be five over two root six. However, that's not our final answer because we've got to get that radical out of the denominator. So we're going to multiply by root 6 over root 6, which is 2 times the square root of 36. And we get 5 root 6 over 2 times regular 6. So 5 root 6 over 12. The tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. So again, we're going to have to multiply by root 6 over root 6 which gives us root 6 over 2 square root of 36. Root 6 over 2 root 6 equals root 6 over 12. Now, the cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, but I'm not going to use this final answer down here, this root 6 over 12. Instead, I'm going to use this one, because if I reciprocate this one, I just get 2 root 6. I don't have to do any work. If I reciprocated this one, I would have to do all sorts of work to get the radical back out of the denominator, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so be advised you can choose which version of the reciprocal value that you already have to reciprocate so that you have something that's easier to work with. Okay, um, some special triangles. We're going to use these on the next page. If I want to find the tangent of 30 degrees, that would be opposite over adjacent from 30 degrees. So if this is my 30 degree corner, opposite over adjacent would be 1 half over root 3 over 2. Which is 1 half times 2 over root 3. Twos are going to cancel. And then simplify by multiplying by root 3 over root 3, which is root 3 over root 9, which is root 3 over 3. The cosine of 60 degrees. Okay, 60 degrees is here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 1 half divided by 1, which is just 1 half. Notice in the first example and the second example, I started from different corners. So my definition for opposite and adjacent was different if I was in the 30 degree corner as compared to if I was in the 60 degree corner. Now, sine of 45 degrees is uh, for, I use either one of these corners, opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1, which is just square root of 2 over 2. Now the secant of 60 degrees, we don't even have to look at the triangles because it's just the reciprocal of the cosine of 60 degrees. So if that's 1 half, this is 2. 
cotangent of 45 degrees? Well, cotangent is uh, opposite, or sorry, adjacent over opposite. So that would be square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2, which is just 1. Sine of pi over 3. Now remember, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So that would be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1, which is square root of 3 over 2. The cosecant of pi over 6, well, here's pi over 6. I'm looking at the sine of that. So that would be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 half. And then I just reciprocate 1 half, and I get 2. Megan Allen to account for not, please. Megan Allen to account for not. Now, co-function identities are harder. They're not, not as hard as they look. People think that they're difficult, but they're not that bad. All you have to do is find the identity on the right that you're, that you're asked to find. So I've given, I've given you a bunch of formulas. Some of them are um, radians, some of them are degrees. Other than that, they're the same exact thing. So if I want to find the sine of 46 degrees, that's right here. See how it says equals the sine of x? So I'm going to write this down. Cosine of 90 degrees minus x equals the sine of x. That's what this one says. Because it says sine of x, that's what I started with. So I used the one on the right. Okay, so that means that the cosine of 90 degrees minus 46 degrees would have to be equal to the sine of 46 degrees. Basically, they're just telling you what other formula is equal to what you have. So basically, the sine of 46 degrees is equal to the cosine of, if I do the subtraction, 44 degrees. Now you can do the same with radians. There's this one. You can do the same with radians. You want to find the cotangent. Uh, over here would be right there, this one. Says that the tangent of pi over 2 minus x equals the cotangent of x. So we're talking about pi over 12. So the tangent of pi over 2 minus pi over 12 equals the cotangent of pi over 12. So we're going to figure this out, what this equals, right there. So I just do the subtraction, I need a common denominator, so I have the tangent of 6 pi over 12 minus 1 pi over 12, which gives me the tangent of 5 pi over 12, being equal to the original value cotangent pi over 12. Okay, and on the last page, I have um, um, some of the basic trigonometry that you guys have seen like a long time ago, the first time you ever used trigonometry, you did this kind of thing. So basically here's a lake uh, right here. This is the lake there. And they want to know the distance across the lake. Uh, I'm sorry. To Okay. Yeah, the distance across the lake is unknown. So we're trying to find A. Okay. Um, if you want to find uh, that distance A, and you know this distance here, what you basically have, here's the angle that you know, you have your opposite side and you have your adjacent side. That's what you're working with, the side you need and the side you already have, which means that we don't need a third side, we just need two out of three. Now, what function of the three basic ones, sine, cosine, and tangent, operates with only opposite and adjacent? That's tangent. The tangent of any angle equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So side I want and side I need gives me this function. And so if I plug in all the numbers, this tangent of 24 degrees equals A over 750. I take my calculator right here and I punch in tangent of 24 degrees, make sure your um, mode is in degrees, and you get about 0.445228685 equals A over 750. And then if I just multiply both sides by 750, I get approximately 333.9 yards. Um, the other one I don't have time for, but it's pretty much the same thing. I'm just going to show it to you right here. There's that one.